you know when you hear the straight up menace piano in the background we got some serious serious talk to talk about you know we did edge players yesterday go check that out if you haven't seen it and that was kind of a fun conversation but you know i get really serious when it comes to my offensive lineman i don't play when it comes to my offensive lineman i ain't <clears throat> We're going to do a top 12 today, guards, tackles, and centers. Of course, I'm going to differentiate them and tell them where they're possibly going to be playing, how they project, all that good stuff. Um, the positions I think they should be playing, because that's absolutely a different thing than the um, than the actual the actual spots that they were playing, you know. Then, of course, we're going to compare them to their peers, the other guys in this group, and why I have those guys, you know, ranked higher than the people that we're comparing them to, so... We'll have that conversation. Thank you guys for being here. Um, this was a, was a pretty interesting task to pull off because a lot of these guys are similar. A lot of these guys are damn near the same dude, you know, give or take like one or two traits or whatever. So um, that's why I really wait to do this thing till like April. I, I, I take my time. I wait. I get real last minute. Sometimes I procrastinate and play Final Fantasy VII. But besides that, I think we got the work done. Let's get into it. Uh, this year, what I want to do is talk about guys that I did like and did not like that didn't make the list. So let's get into it. <clears throat> Solomon Kenley is a guy that I do like. Uh, guard from Georgia. It's interesting, man. The more you get into the offensive line conversation with this draft guy, you, know, you run into a lot of these Georgia. You run into, a, you got, what, three Georgia guys? I got three Georgia guys in this video. Two on my top 12 list. Solomon didn't make my list, but as I was watching Isaiah and Andrew, cool. As I was watching them, I stumbled across Solomon. Um, also, Joe Sandberg told me to keep eyes on him. I was going to watch him anyway. I'd just be procrastinating. But um, I like Solomon. I like him. Uh, he seems to be a big, heavy dude. Um, I think he's more heavy than powerful. You know how sometimes you can move people just because you weigh more than them, and then you plus your power with that. Uh, I think Solomon Kenley does a good job, and all the the Georgia guys are really good at that tactical lean. Go watch my Andrew Thomas film session if you need a definition on tactical lean. And plus, uh, what I really like about Solomon is that he's a big, heavy dude. Is, is his name Kenley or Kindly? I I say Kenley because I don't want my offensive line to be nice necessarily, so I'm calling him <laughs> calling him Kenley. Um, what I really liked about him is that, you know, he he's he's big heavy dude, but he's also can move well guy, right? And I like for my big heavy dudes to be move well guy. Solomon Kenley, kindly Kenley is one of those dudes. So um shouts out to him, but he's not on my list though. Another guy I liked is uh Ben Barch. I discovered him in the senior bowl process and I watched a little bit more of him later. I'm glad I got a chance to watch him at the senior bowl first because he played for Lil Ass School University. You know what I mean? Whatever obscure state college that he plays at, Saint Um pick religions persons school marries john's one of them schools he plays at that chat box help me out um but when he's playing at those schools man he's playing against a lot of um managers and a lot of stock brokers he's playing against you know what i mean people that ain't necessarily going to be football players so it was refreshing to see him at the senior bowl surrounded with all that talent uh so i like ben barch i'm a fan of him and normally people ask me yo vach who's a late round tackle uh you can find and you know what i'm saying develop into something and i normally don't like late round tackles because if you get into territory of late round tackles they just ain't good no more you know what i mean like 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 the league needs needs tackles so bad that regular tackles end up being first round picks. We'll talk about that in a little bit later. Um, so Ben Barge, man, if you can find him in the fourth, he'd probably be like a third round guy or something. I don't know, but if you can find him in the fourth, I think that'll be a good little place for him to, uh, to get picked up. I like Ben Barge. Ezra Cleveland was cool. <laughs> I'm kind of going down my like list a little bit. You know, I'm, I'm liking my list a little less the more and more I go. Ezra Cleveland was cool. Um, I just think he needed just, just a little more. He needed a little more nasty. He needed a little more power. He was able to move some people, but um, this was a Boise State thing. So he was moving those Hawaii kids two inches or he was moving the BYU kids, you know, uh, you know, just just a little bit. He, he didn't come off as a powerful guy to me. Sometimes, you know, you can beat somebody and not – you know, come off as powerful. You know, you that just you know you just beat that dude. So Ezra Cleveland is just a guy that I just didn't think put together enough of it. But I think he travels well enough. I think his feet 
kind of keep him in this um in this uh, conversation. I heard some people talk about him as a first round tackle. I call it BS, but like I said earlier, you can be subpar, but if you move well, you can exist in these um, in these mock draft player rank scenarios. But Vach sees through all the tomfoolery. He ain't gonna be on mine. Uh, and Tyler Badass, right? Tyler's cool. I, I don't know how to say his last name. It looks like BD or whatever, but I just call him Badass because it looks like that. But um. He's cool. He's a center. I think he's going to work well within his combo blocks. But I just, if if you're not going to be powerful guy, I want you to be super move around guy, right? And he's cool move around guy. He's not super duper move around guy. So he's going to work within his combo as well. But I just needed a little more strength from him. Centers this year aren't very powerful as a whole. I give y'all that. But I need you to have something to kind of put you over the edge. And Tyler just didn't have that thing. Y'all don't ask me about Nitain Moody. Don't ask me why he's not in this uh, on this list. You know what I'm saying? People, and and l- listen, man. Since put, people call me hating <laughs> and all this good stuff, and they're like, "Well, Vach, do you think that if he can work on his hands and work on his feet and work on his lower body strength, he'll be cool?" Well, damn it, you can take Vach Lombardi and say, "If you work on his feet, get him back in shape, get, put on 20 pounds of muscle, and then Vach can go play pro football." You know what I mean? There are guys that live and die in this league by their feet not being good, right? So I'm not gonna sit up here and, and try to get you to talk yourself into making Nitain Moody a solid pick for you, right? And I ain't even talking about injuries. A lot of people ain't drafting him because, or, or, or talking about drafting him or they're dropping him because of his injury concerns or whatever. I ain't talking about that. I just don't think he's a solid enough guard to get it done just as a football player. I don't think he's good enough to get it done on top of um, he's broken every uh bone from his from his waist down or whatever this ain't me being funny go check out his you know his medical histories or whatnot i i I mean i'm just not a fan i'm just not a fan so we're gonna put Nitain moody way down in that bin down there i'm not a fan of let's get him up out of here though and let's get this top 12 running this video may uh go a little longer but it's vice talking offensive line what the hell you thought was gonna happen robert hunt i kind of uh stumbled across robert hunt later in my um in my draft research, I saw some people giving him some first round consideration. Yo, Vach, I see Robert Hunt. Uh, Robert Hunt's getting a lot of uh, getting a lot of late first round hype. Well, you know, Vach ain't you know, Vach ain't falling for all the foo foo mess or whatever. I'm not gonna go for that. I do think he's a solid player though. I will give him that. I do think Robert Hunt from uh, ULL. I think he's a solid player. He was the right tackle there, but of course, I don't think he's gonna be a right tackle full time. That don't seem good to be good for his health. I think he's gonna move inside and play guard. Uh, and I think that's where he's, he's going to be best at, you know, combo with a center, just kind of moving people or whatever. And I, I like his athletic ability enough to where he can live and play guard. Um, I just want my guards to be, you know, when I look at offensive line, I want I just want this thing to be like Voltron, man. And my guards are the fists that we swing and punch people with. So I want my guards to be powerful, right? You can live with tackles and centers not being powerful. I think your guards need to be flat out gangsters i don't know if robert hunt is that though um but i do think he is good enough i think robert hunt is is good enough to be solid at guard i'm just not losing my mind over him um shane lemieux in which i think he was a little more physical um at guard i think he's another player that's not as complete as he could be now okay so how about this we when we talk about players developing right um, and somebody said, okay, Nitain Moody can work on seven things and he'll be okay. Well, when we look at these two players here, Shane Lemieux uh, from Oregon and Robert Hunt from ULL, when we look at these two guys, I believe these two guys can develop and be better. Why do I say that? Because I think Robert Hunt's good right now. I just think he should he should probably be in the weight room a little bit to be more angry and physical and strong and pissed off. Shane Lemieux is, I think, strong and physical enough to play right now. He just got to work on some of his technical things, right? So it's just one thing from each person that I think I can fix and then, we'll, you know what I mean? That's the difference between these two guys fixing something and moving on or Nitain Moody fixing five things, trying to be better. You see what I mean? Um, but what? But the one thing that puts Shane Lemieux over uh, Robert Hunt, in my opinion, um, I think Shane Lemieux played, um, first of all, Power 5 thing. Shouts out to to any power five players i have big faith in those guys but we've we've seen shane lemieux play against the big boys like we we saw what um you know what they did in um you know versus the uh the utah kids we saw what they did versus the auburn guys and i i put that auburn d line over anybody so um 
I got faith in Shane Lemieux in, in terms of, you know, him going to go wrestle some big, strong gangs on the other side of him. Shane Lemieux. Shouts out to him. Um, so I got Ruiz, uh, Cesar Ruiz from Michigan. He's a center. I got him over these two guys because we go right back to competition. Cool. He's a competition guy. Right. But but I think this is more of a of a position thing. Right. Can Caesar as a center exist better than Shane as a guard? That's why I got Caesar over him. Think about what these two guys, you know, like what their jobs are. Caesar doesn't have to go out and be powerful. Caesar just got to go out, get people lined up, move well and be Voltron and combo with somebody. You know what I mean? And Shane in his own right combos with centers. But Shane has to be more of the power guy to anchor that. Caesar's going to live and die by his guard. So I think as long as Caesar's guard is good, Caesar's going to be good. You know what I mean? I don't know if Shane Lemieux can always anchor that that spot for him. Now, when Shane cleans up the little technical things, um, the little technical things that he has to, you know, clean up, then maybe we can have some more faith in him. I'm talking about right now. I'm talking about today. Um, is it easier to find a guard to be compatible with Shane Lemieux? Sure, you can find a guard that's better compatible uh, competable competable can you find a guard that can compete and be better than Shane Lemieux sure possibly um I think centers are running low in this league right uh so what I like about Caesar is that he can come in I think he can play day one why because he's gonna combo he's gonna be smart and he can move around um I, I was talking about the center earlier I can't think about the center that I was just talking about five seconds ago pardon me but what puts Caesar over the badass right Tyler badass what puts Caesar over the edge uh, over badass why badass is not on the list I think Caesar's movement skills are really good like 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 when you see Caesar climb to the second level and 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 cut those linebackers off right or you or just see him in the outside zone game you see his combo game see he's real fluid it's real fluid um now do i have the same love affair that <laughs> that these mock draft people or these other guys have with season he's like a first round guy to me hell nah hell nah i'm taking season like in the late second or something early third um i think he's a good player but i'm not running out to go get him now we got to have a conversation about austin jackson man um, first of all, I'm not a very big fan of the player of the actual player, but we talking about job descriptions, right? We're talking about job descriptions. Austin Jackson as a tackle. Think about his job compared to these guards job compared to the center's job. And I think Austin Jackson and Cesar Ruiz has, they have the easier job of the four guys here. A lot of people think that um, guards are less inferior uh, or more inferior players than tackles. And that's not true. Some people say, oh, if you can't play tackle, just put them at guard. No, they're, they're two different positions. I think in a lot of cases, it's harder to play guard than it is to play tackle. See what I mean? So when we're talking about doing jobs, Shane Lemieux and Robert Hunt are going to have to dig people out. They're responsible for whatever's directly in front of the quarterback. It's hard to adjust for something directly in front of the quarterback. That's why I want to move people at, you know, take these 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 top tier D linemen. I want to put guys at three tech so much because you can be so much more dominant at three tech than at one and five because you can't get double teamed at three. If somebody double team you at three tech and B gap then they messed up their whole blocking scheme just to get you out the paint, just to kind of deal with you, right? If you're at five tech, you know, like a D end or something, then we can call in a tight end, we can help you out. You know, if you're a one tech guard and center, we can combo you, help you out, right? If you a guard, you out there by yourself. So I, I, I truly think that guards' jobs are harder, and that's why Austin Jackson is over these guys because two things that work in Austin's favor – is that one thing in new football, I think it's easier to deal with outside pass rushers, right? The ball's getting out so quick, read options. Sometimes we ain't even gotta go out there and block defensive ends. We could just read them and just not have to deal with them at all. You know what I'm saying? So that's one thing that's helping Austin Jackson. Another thing that's helping him is that he actually has the feet 
to keep himself in front of people. He got fantastic feet. He's not great everywhere else, right? So the reason why he's on the list and Ezra Cleveland is not, I think Ezra is just as soft. And I S word. I hate saying I don't want to call no football player soft. I don't want. I hate, I hate saying that. I think Austin is just as S word as Ezra Cleveland. But I think Josh's feet are way better than his. Not Josh's, Austin. I think Austin's feet are way better than his. So Austin can live in the National Football League being a subpar, not as physical tackle, right? Just be fast enough to get in front of people, be athletic enough to run outside zone, get combo help when you need it, and exist. These last four guys were kind of hard to put together. If you Shane Lemieux and Aaron Donald is in B gap, that's your ass. If you Austin Jackson and Aaron Donald is lined up at D end or something, go get a tight end and see what you can do about double teaming that dude. You see what I'm saying? I just think the easier the job, the more effective you can be as a football player. You see what I mean? That's why I got Austin over these few guys. Now we're going to get to some players that I actually like. And that argument kind of goes out the window because I don't think that um, I think their their skill transcends, um, you know, job placement or whatever. But uh, chat box, uh, help me out, please. Uh, pronunciation nerds, help me out. Uh, how to say his last name? Lucas Yang. I just call him. Uh, I just call him Luke or whatever. But um, now this is where it gets fun because I like all the rest of the offensive line on his list or whatever. Um, what's so impressive about Luke? He played right tackle, but man, when you watch him play, man, he ain't gonna be at right tackle very long. Man, put that dude at guard and just be great with him. Be great with him. Everything I want my guards to be. That's Luke. That's Luke. You know what I mean? He can move around a little bit because he played tackle. I know he can move around a little bit. He got he he's got some feet to play tackle. Um, but you take those feet and put them with a guard's job responsibility. You know what I'm saying? But then let that dude move people. Ain't too many stalemates with Luke, man. Let that dude flat out engage, drive his feet, and move people. He looked a little bit lost on that edge out there, man. I don't want him navigating in too much space. I want that dude in a damn phone booth, hands locked inside, driving people. He wins board drill every time, I bet. Big, powerful, strong dude. You know what I'm saying? Put that dude to guard. Let him fly, man. He is fantastic, bro. He's my 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. My number 8 guy? All right, cool. I know I'm about to like all the rest of these guys. Cushionberry. Lloyd Cushionberry is my guy. Um, Now, what separates... Uh, Cushionberry from Yang, I think the job description, right? I think it's a lot easier to be a center. So centers sometimes get the nods. Um, but I think Cushionberry as a center is better than Ruiz at center, right? Because um, f- first of all, I think they both have similar movement skills. I like how 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 light on his feet Cushionberry is. Cushionberry can move around, but then Cush a big ass dude. Cush got more size, right? Cause well, he like what six four or something like six four long arm three whatever whatever combine nerds help me out um and even if that's not the case he looks bigger sometimes you could just look a little bit bigger he looks more more stout you know he's not the most powerful guy in the world though I will say that but I think that's because he gets he gets a little tall sometimes he gets a little high you know what I mean but you can just work on getting his helmet down and just let everything else fly man you ain't got to worry about his movement skills you ain't got to worry about him getting guys lined up watch your LSU film man um he gets guys lined up I think he can exist in one-on-one scenarios I do think if, if he had to block somebody one-on-one he could deal with it but you ain't gonna ask him to do that very much just ask him to combo with people he'll move on you know he'll just do that great fantastically um I think he I also think he's a better pass rusher than um than uh ruiz um plus plus i think he gained a lot of respect at the senior bowl right go watch my um my uh senior bowl tape right at the end of the season when all the you know when everything just kind of comes together you as good as you gonna get you in your prime you warmed up you at mid-season form watch him play against some of the some of the 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 better senior talent he's holding up against those guys he lost some fights but Shit, he won a lot of them. <laughs> he won a lot of them. Lloyd Cushenberry from LSU. He's going to play center for you. That's my guy. 
Um, and this big ass action figure that should go to the WWE, Isaiah Wilson. I've been seeing some people say Isaiah Wilson uh, is probably gonna get drafted before Andrew. I call BS. I'm a chill though. Um, in terms of being a big ass dude, big heavy ass dude, I have a soft spot for big ass people that can move. Big people that can move around and got light feet. Um, like I said, man, if, if football don't work, he need to go wrestle. He need to go be a damn security guard or something. This picture don't do it justice, but he way bigger than these cheering over here. Like, I think my number four guy is the only guy that's bigger than him. So, uh, talk about that. But, you know, he's big, but he ain't like fat, though, <laughs> which is something else that is interesting about Isaiah. But uh, um, good athleticism, good power good nastiness angry dude only thing you got to clean up is some technical stuff um he leans and lunges a little bit that's a problem with him he'll lunge he'll get kind of high you know what i mean so that's just technical stuff you got to clean up but i do think he can play right now i think he can exist and play in the national football league right this second um shit i don't know how much more in his man body he got to get but it's bound to be something let's keep moving um josh jones right Let's talk about this. Josh Jones is my tackle number four, right? We're going to have that conversation when we get there. And I should put this in the video somewhere, like type it up so y'all can see it. But um, Josh Jones is my tackle number four. I was kind of apprehensive at first, but I had to go back. I had to watch his film. I had to get out of my own way. And I had to respect all football players as, you know, as whatever you're going to ask them to do. I had to respect it. Um, I ended up liking Josh Jones, man. I ended up liking Josh Jones. Am I like smitten over the player? I'm not going to say that. Um, but fantastic feet. I didn't think he, at first, I didn't think he was as powerful as he could have been. Right? But the more I watched the film, man, I think he had enough power, man. I think he was adequate enough in terms of power. Everybody ain't going to be a mauler. Everybody ain't going to be Lucas Nyang. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's not going to be that guy. But I do think he was powerful enough to exist um in the national football league as a tackle i tell you what he is though he's tenacious and he's a finisher i'll give you that he may not be the most powerful guy but he is nasty he's angry and he can finish people i'll give him that um plus his feet are fantastic he can exist in a world um to where you know all you need is fantastic feet now what puts him over the edge um for um over the edge over isaiah i, I just think he's a little more polished than isaiah as a hand placement dude, as a footwork guy, Isaiah is a physical freak. You know, he can go out and, you know, pick up a house and move furniture and wrestle people and all that. But I think Josh is more technically refined. I think he's a more technically refined player. And what makes Josh better than Austin? I just think, you know, Josh is a little more powerful than Austin. Um, not the most powerful guy, but I think he's more powerful than Austin, just a little stronger than Austin. So that's my context there. And uh, Makai Becton, <laughs> chat box. <laughs> Can y'all guess my my top my top three guys now? It should be easy at this point. Um, but Makai Becton, yes. So, I mean, it ain't much I can really tell you that you ain't seen on my on my film session. There should be no reason why y'all watching this video and y'all haven't seen my film sessions or whatnot. But um, Becton, another three hundred and sixty pound guy that really ain't fat like that. Um, powerful dude, fantastic movement to be 360 some odd pounds and to be able to move like he moves you know what i mean like he ain't got heavy feet his feet are somewhat heavy because he's a heavy dude but his feet pick up and move well for him to be as heavy as he is um some team gonna try to make him lose some weight i guess i kind of like him being a heavy ass dude but he got no technique at all he's super raw like he ain't got no kind of he just goes out there push people and people fall down that's what it is he don't he don't lock hands head on the correct side and drive you know what i mean he don't do none of that he just go out there and mauls people what makes him better than these guys all these guys got technique and they still ain't better than him they still ain't better than him makai beckton i think what puts him over the edge is we always run into the guy that's big dude that moves well guy right we always run into them but we look at him and be like yeah man they big and they move well but they don't play well or something but but we can make the footwork mask that or, um, you know, if, if, if they such and such and such, they'll be better. But Kyle Beckton can block people today. He can line up and smoke people today without his technique. 
It's just that he'll be so much better if he had technique. So, but Kyle Beckett is my guy, man. Some people had him as the number one tackle. I, you know, like getting drafted by the Giants and all that. I don't know, my guy. So, uh, let's have the Tristan Wirfs conversation because I think it's a very interesting conversation that's going to require a little bit of nuance. He's my number three offensive lineman. Okay? He's my guard number one, which is probably why he's here. But he's my tackle number five. I think Josh Jones is a better tackle than him. But he's a better offensive lineman than Josh Jones. Right? Because his guard play is so fantastic. I talk about what I needed in guard. You put a dude at guard, let him move people, muscle people, dig him out the hole. That's that's Tristan Wirfs. That's Tristan Wirfs. You know? You ain't going to see a whole bunch of people muscle him. But what can happen is you can see people confuse him on stunts. You can see people manipulate him in space. You can see people out quicking him to the outside. And that's why I think he needs to be playing his ass on the inside. So there's another one of those situa- situations happened last uh, two few years ago with uh, Cam Robinson coming out of Alabama, got drafted by Jacksonville. He was like, oh, Vach, he can play tackle. He's been playing tackle in Alabama his whole life. I'm like, I get that, but he'll be a fantastic guard. And now we see Cam Robinson about to get ready to play guard. I mean, it's just I just think, you know, I, I just don't understand what's what's so hard to understand about these concepts. Just because you can play tackle don't mean you always should. You know what I mean? You He can play free safety, but that don't mean he's best there. You see what I mean? You put Tristan Wirfs at guard, you have a pro bowl guard until his career is over with, right? You put him at tackle, you have a solid tackle piece. A solid, okay tackle piece. There'll probably be a good swing tackle, possibly. Possibly. But put that guard, put that dude at guard, man. Let him muscle people. Let him be fantastic. Let him smoke the shot at these civilian kids and move on with your life. On the contrary, Andrew Thomas, I think, is a fantastic tackle. He's my tackle number two. Um, I think he's uh, his advantage is run game. Right, he's run game advantage guy. Is he bad in the pass game? No, he's not bad in the pass game. I just don't think he's super elite in the pass game. Um, this is my tactical lean guy. If you go back and watch my film session on Andrew Thomas, you will see my, uh, you know what I mean. You will see me define tactical lean. He uses his weight. He leans on people. People hit the ground. Bodies hit the floor. He finishes people. Um, nastiness, good size. Um, people were saying somebody's arm length, and that'll be the reason to put him inside that guard. I'm not putting Andrew Thomas at guard because I think Andrew Thomas would be a pretty damn good, um, damn good tackle on the outside. He got he got the feet to be able to move outside, um, you know, zone blocking all that, all all that stuff, man. Thomas can do everything, man. Tom Thomas can do everything, and and as of late, there's been this this movement that has Andrew Thomas like, uh, you know, like tackle four, or he's been draft, he's being mocked in the twenties or something. Man, look, y'all let these damn civilian mock draft people come in here and put Andrew Thomas as the fourth tackle if you want to, man. Watch the film, man. You, you'll be good. You'll be good, man. Andrew's Andrew's the best. Andrew's one of the best. But the best, best, best is Jedrick Wills. And I don't, I don't think this close, man. I think Jedrick Wills from Alabama is, uh, is uh, he's my O-line number one. He's my tackle number one. I ain't putting him at guard ever. His feet are intoxicating, man. Watch his feet. You'll lose your mind looking at a man is better than porn. Um, hands, technique, movement, all that good stuff, man. It's amazing, bro. Um, now, I think where T- Andrew Thomas has the edge over J- over uh, Jedrick Wills, I think Andrew Thomas is, is a better run blocker. But Jedrick is a mile better of a pass blocker over Andrew Thomas. That's just what that is. But uh, as a complete player, I just think as a complete player, Jedrick Wills is a little bit better. Now, we talking about that, though, man. You look at Wills, Thomas, Wirfs, Beckton, Jones. I don't know the combination of of, of where these guys are going to go. Some guys are going to value some players a little higher than others. That's cool. That's okay. Um, it's just my list, though. It's just my list. I don't know how, how they're going to get, you know, I don't know what order they're going to get drafted or whatever. I don't know how that's going to pan out, but um, – you know, I think the top four or five guys, I think that's a really close conversation to have. I think that's close. If you think Jedrick Wills is number two and Thomas is one, that's fine. If you think Beckton is number one because of his upside, you know, that's cool too. Um, 
if you like worse because of his versatility to play inside and outside fine you can do that too so we'll see what happens man we'll see what happens i don't hate nobody for what they think but these are my thoughts i appreciate y'all for tuning in man um later on tonight we're going to be doing a offensive line reaction like to this so if y'all disagree with me if y'all hated what i said then call into the show and we can talk about it we can have a good long conversation about what you disagreed about and um of course on day one and day two of the uh of the actual draft i'll be doing my coverage and analysis and you know i'll be using phones and dialing people in and you know hopefully get y'all's reaction to the draft as well so it should be a fun show y'all hold it down for the doski woski and peace whiskey man salute the youtube illuminati is taking money away from your favorite content creators and people often ask the best way to support the channel directly i tell them that subscribing to my patreon just one dollar a month would increase production and the frequency of uploads basically that means more content for you for less than a bag of almond m ms you can support the channel call dibs on requests for future videos and you can have access to patreon exclusive material like my throwback film sessions that's patreon.com slash lombardi i appreciate the support doski woski salute